Well, hello, folks. I'm Wally. Welcome to Small Lot Farms. Uh, we're a suburban mini farm, whatever you want to call it. We're doing everything on a third acre. We own two thirds, but our house and what we raise and grow is all done on a third acre. And even half of that third acre isn't used. So we're, our goal here is to help you grow some food, uh, produce some meat for your family. If you like quail, this is about raising uh, this particular brooder is for quail. I also have some chickens we're raising. We've got eight uh, hens, egg layers. They're small, a couple of weeks old still. And I'll get into more of that in other videos. But today what I want to show you is how I built my three foot by three foot quail brooder. And uh, it's already in use and you're going to see a photo of it here at the end. This is the material list I needed. Uh, 36 inch hardware cloth, you need about six feet. One by 10 sixes, one by two eights or six footers will work. One by four six and four small hinges. On the cut list, you have the one by twos. Those are going to be for the door frames. Four 18 inch, four 34 and a half inch. One by fours, those are the legs, four at 36. And a lot of these things can be substituted as you see me building this thing. Uh, if you're like me, you can say, okay, I'll, I like that, but I don't like this. And, and you can change that up. The one by tens, uh, I have it written here, 436. That's incorrect. I messed it up. I'm not going to stop this recording again. You need two at 36 and two at 34 and a half. Okay. And then the 36 inch hardware cloth, the actual cut is one 36 incher and then two at 17 by 36 for the door insets. Okay, this uh, slide here is just a, showing you what I started with. Actually, you see some treated stuff in the back. I didn't end up using that. I, I ended up going with some one, ripping some one by four out of what I had laying around here. So that's just a quick shot of the basic material list. Okay, here I am pre-drilling the holes. Uh, with one by, I'm using drywall screws. You're, uh, you're, you're so close to the edge, you're better off uh, pre-drilling, pilot holing, and that's what I'm doing in these two slot, uh, these two shots here. Just pilot holing, pilot holing is that even a word? Drilling pilot holes and then screwing the sides together. Okay, and this is just me finishing up the drilling process. I got the four sides. I highly recommend. I do things unfortunately in a rushed fashion. I don't have a lot of time, and uh, you should square it up at this point. Because what you're going to be putting on the bottom is just this hardware cloth. It's not that uh, it's not made to an exacting measure, and it's not really going to be effective for squaring uh, the box up. I've been in construction most of my life. Uh, usually, you're working with square material, sheet goods, or whatever. You build a box like this. You put a square piece of wood on the bottom. You can use two square sides and square the box up. You're not going to be able to do that with the hardware cloth. So I highly recommend you take some small pieces of wood or whatever and uh, to brace the box on the other side until you get the uh, hardware cloth actually attached. This is just a shot to show you the uh, hardware cloth that I use, three foot by 25 foot. I have a ton of wire around here from when I used to make my own cages. I buy my cages now. Uh, I'll let you know about that. I'm using Winola Ranch. Excellent, excellent cages. Uh, I'm not an affiliate, but I do recommend them. Maybe I'll become an affiliate, but right now I'm not. And so if you're looking for high quality uh, grow out cages and breeder cages, Wynola Ranch is an excellent place to, to get it. I had to go to Home Depot and buy this wire. That 25 foot roll cost me $67. That's an absolute sin. Today's November 8th. I hope you're out there voting whatever caused this away. I'll say no more. The second shot here is me unrolling the wire and getting ready to cut it. You should wear gloves. If Most of you watching this are familiar with cutting hardware cloth, I'm sure. But if you're not, you need to wear gloves. This stuff has got sharp edges and it will hurt. What I'm showing here is I, I bent I cut this wire a little long, so I really lied. It's not 36 inches. You need about 38 or 37 or 38 at least. I bent over the last two inches so my hands wouldn't get caught on the bottom when I'm moving the cage. And then I mashed that flat with the hammer. So that's what that's showing you here. I really recommend it. This should be obvious what I'm doing here. 
just showing you me stapling the bottom on. I use 3 8 inch uh, staples. And then uh, we'll have a frame here in a few minutes where I added some uh, 3 quarter inch fence staples to keep this held down. In fact, here's the shot of the 3 quarter inch fence staple. These things are great. I uh, doubled them up in the corners and then probably every 4 to 6 inches uh, I added one of those staples to the bottom. You know, you'll get a good bit of weight between the feeders and the birds themselves. You'll keep the birds. I, I start the birds off in a tub in the basement. I, my incubator's in the basement. And when the birds first hatch, I, I start them in a tub down there for about the first week. Today, the uh, yesterday when I made this, the birds were about a week old, so I moved them into this yesterday. They're doing great today, uh, so that worked out well. When you move them in at a week, you still need to keep a good bit of uh, paper on the floor, uh, towel, paper towels, because their feet aren't that strong yet. So I do it about half and half. They do all of their messing where they eat and drink. So that part of the cage, I don't put any paper towels down. That way, most of the poop will fall through. And uh, I'll do some more video on that. This is something you may want to do it some different ways. You could use rebar, you could use uh, wire, uh, rebar wire. I chose to go with some of the one by since I had them laying around here. Uh, and these extra sticks here aren't really in that material list. I, yeah, they are. Yeah, they, I take that back. They're in that. But I don't think I put them on the cut list. So what these are, this is the bottom. And these... Uh, will add support where the waterer and feed will go and then the the treated one that's further out here that's just going to be an additional support for the weight of the the quail themselves all right this shot uh and if you're wondering why i'm not looking straight at the screen my camera is over here my computer's over here so forgive me uh, i do voiceover work also and my studio is set up as it is. I really can't arrange it for the rearrange it for this. But you're seeing a side look at these bottom supports, and then you can see me starting to frame the doors up uh, in front of that. Again, just another uh, shot of the doors being framed. I recommend not only put one screw in each of these because it's only a, a one by two, so it's an inch and a half wide. But you should pilot hole. I didn't. It, it worked all right. One of them split. But again, I just I have no patience when it comes to this kind of thing. And I just I'm whacking it out to get it done. OK, but you should pilot hole them and that will give you a, a no split door frame. OK, this is obvious. Uh, a picture of the door frames before the wires on. And then I took a photo of me putting the wire on the frame. Same thing I recommend here that I did on the box. You should square these up, uh, put a piece of wood on the other side that will keep the frame square while you attach the wire because the wire will not hold it square. You guys get the advantage of me making my mistake. Here's the doors going on. Calculating the, the dimensions of the doors on paper and in reality are two different things. So I, I made these doors 18 and a quarter. Once I got everything on them, that was too big. It shouldn't have been. It should have been allowed me a half inch, but for whatever reason, between cutting, wire size, they ended up being too big. So in my cut sheet, I make these doors only 18 inches wide. That leaves you an inch to play with, which should work out better. Because of that, you can't tell from here, but I had to have one door hinged on the side, and the other door I had to hinge on the back. Works out fine for me inside, but uh, it's not the way I would have wanted it had I taken my time. And this is just a video showing you one of the doors open. The door that's closed over there, you can see it kind of hanging over. It fits a little bit better than that. But I actually had to hinge it in the back so it comes straight up. Actually worked out well. I have the feeder on that side. And I can, uh, I can reach everything from with one door open just about. Okay, I didn't show me cutting the legs and attaching them. But there they are. There's four legs on the box and you can tell by this shot that looks out the back of my uh, yard uh, we're in a community but it's a rural community so I still say suburbs we're on a small lot I can't just do what I want here 
uh, as we move through things, and I show you the rest of our garden here, what uh, Jean and I are doing, we have deer all over this place. There's probably a herd of 30 that are here almost daily. So we had to fence the whole upper part of the yard in, or they eat everything, flowers, garden, nonstop. They don't eat quail. That's the good news. Okay, my lighting situation isn't the best here. Uh, the overhead light is on, but it doesn't overwhelm the red heat lamp that's on these. But I took a picture of it to show you and to talk to you about how I'm doing this. In the past, I've always used oil pans, oil trays, and had to make my cages to fit those. Uh, these birds mess so much, and I really don't, I, I've got pans in my other Wynola ranch cages, but with this brooder setup, I had a different idea. And as you can see underneath, there's wood chips. And I can just mix the wood chips up. And uh, instead of having to dump a tray every day or a couple of times a day. So there's, this box is setting over a pile of wood chips. It's actually where I started the chickens. I just left the wood chips there and this fit right in the spot. But I've got a, a, a 250 watt heat lamp above them. On one side, you can see where it's hitting on the cage top. And this is it with both open. You can see the door on the right is actually opens up. The door on the left opens left to right, or that would be right to left. You can see how I've got the feeder in there and the waterers. And you see, you can see the purpose of the supports. And they do help. Now, I have the one feeder on the right. Initially, I was going to put it all the way against the back wall, and I still could. Uh, but that's why I put those uh, two supports on the bottom. It was intention. It was intended for that feeder to go all the way back. The little feeder in the front, that's just an old chicken feeder I had, but it's working pretty good. So I added it in there. They really like it. With quail, Caternix quail particularly, uh, you're talking a, a growth rate that's three, four times that of a bobwhite quail. A bobwhite quail will take six months to reach maturity. These birds, if I'm really looking to get rid of them fast, I can butcher them in six to seven weeks. They'll start laying eggs at seven to eight weeks. So it's a great bird for a small farm. They can produce meat really quick. So that I think is the end of my video. I just wanted you to see what I did. If you've got any questions, you can put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching and uh, just stay with the channel. There's more coming.